That might be a good one to do. What's that? Ragtime Annie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Uh, I got, uh, Larry Scott mentioned that I got to do some uh, movie work when I was in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, 1975, I got to, uh, I got a call one night to, to uh, see what I would charge. Mr. Bodybuilder, everything, world champion bodybuilder, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Governor of uh, California. Governor of California now. <laughs> What I would charge to teach him how to look like he could play a fiddle for this movie. You know. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. <laughs> it, was on, it was on the other night. Wait, what's that? <laughs> so I wouldn't charge him anything, just have him come over. Well, he came over, and I, we worked up a few things, and they, he, could, he could do it, you know. But later on, after that, I got to know him real well, and he, he called me up one time, and he says, he was going to direct a movie called Christmas in Connecticut. This is about 1992 or three. And he says, uh, Brad, can you still play the fiddle or what? And I said, well, what, probably. <laughs> and uh, he says, I'm, I'm going to pick out a couple of tunes that people can dance to. So we picked this one out. And this is the second tune I ever learned from my dad, was great time many. Oh, Although yeah. it was how neat it was to be able to play that tune in this movie, Christmas in Connecticut, for, for Arnold, you know. <laughs> so you kids out there, Never know what you do. What you do. Well, and you know they take uh, they've taken old tunes and, and used them to make great great uh, soundtracks. Uh, I remember that we played Byron and I played Sally Gooden all our life, and the only guy that ever really made any money off of it was Paul McCartney. Sally Good. He called it Sally G. Oh yeah. And uh, somewhere, I think Johnny Gimble did the, the fiddle part somewhere in that scene. So uh, Paul McCartney uh, made the millions and we just enjoyed playing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, right down there, we just play together? Yeah, I guess. Just...
town manager and your dad about that. that you know, uh, we met each other, I don't know, a contest. I think we're about 15 or 16 years old. About that. But you learned, who did you learn from? Benny Thomas? Benny Thomason was my uh, kind of, the, I learned from a lot, everybody, of course, but he was my main uh, teacher, and Benny lived down in uh, in mid, mid uh, cities in Dallas, Arlington, and uh, I met him, and uh, he kind of uh, started me going and got me really passionate about right. football. Land. He started a lot of people. You know, he did. Mark O'Connor, for one. I mean, yeah. He, he helped Mark a lot. I just saw Mark last weekend at our Bluegrass Festival in Guthrie. I had him play there. Oh, my. Yeah, and... Uh, well, we were with him down in uh, Nashville at the Grand Masters this last weekend, and he played. Yeah, he played and, right. Oh, my. He's uh, He kind of left us uh, fiddlers in the Yeah, in yeah, the he's dust. taking it to a different a stratosphere. Level. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, he, had, he had his uh, Appalachian string quartet, uh, not a quartet, but a trio. Yeah, yeah. And he had a cello player who could play like a fiddler. I mean, he didn't put it under his chin, but he... He could. He played soft in the gravy. It was unbelievable. Did you hear him do that? I heard him do that. that. insane. That's not right. He ain't so much well. for that. So much for Mark Connor. Yeah, we don't like him. <laughs> yeah. He's